are as one big family, and it's uh, such a pleasure to be here today. We have baptism, and um, one of the things happened, Veronica, we call her Shay, and we're all Chapman, and then me as a, an example, we, um, for me personally, uh, I was baptized at 13, accepted the Lord. Um, but as I look back over my life before my mind was renewed, and my heart was changed. I realized that I went down a sinner, came up a sinner. And so I just wanted to make sure personally that I did it the right way. So today was a wonderful day. Didn't know Chapman was going to do it. We know Shay, she went down years ago uh, and she wanted to do it just to be sure. And so we want to congratulate you all. We got something for you at the end of service. But today, it's a great day. Um, it's a great day. Uh, it's a great day to understand who you are and whose you are. Uh, so today, we're going to talk about overcoming worry. Overcoming worry. And uh, this is something that I think that we, um, as believers, struggle with at times. And it, it, is, it is a natural thing for us to worry at times about whatever is going on in our lives. But God has told us clearly to not worry. Worrying is, is really carnal nature. Uh, it's, it's using our own understanding about the situation and thinking that worry is going to solve the problem. So what I want to encourage you all to do before we get into Scripture, when there is worry... Go to the word. When there is worry, go to the word. Your worship produces patience. Your worship produces patience. Now, let's just get right into it. What do we know about God's promises? They're true. We know that he said that he wants to give us a hope in the future. Found in Isaiah. Plans to prosper us, plans to do so many great things beyond our understanding that he loves us so much, we cannot even begin to understand the depths of his love for us. A future equates to years. Now and years later, and an eternity beyond later when later ends in this realm. He wants to give us a future. He wants to give us hope. A lot of times when we worry... We feel there is no hope. And then he says in his word that my ways are not your ways for my thoughts or not your thoughts. But when you walk close with him, his thoughts do become your thoughts and his ways do become your ways. It is a process for each of us. And when we allow ourselves to go to the word to be in worship. We're in his presence. And the beauty of his presence is he gives us that peace that surpasses all understanding when it seems like all oh, heck has broken out in your life. And we've all been there as human beings where things have happened and we just, the only thing we would do is worry. And so what he's saying to us is to trust me, to trust I know the way that I will always honor my promises to you. Then he says to us again that my love is beyond your understanding. So when God has promised us all of these things and so much more, because what he asked for us is so deep. It goes so far down that you can handle all of what he has for you. So he has to grow us. And perhaps we might want to listen to him and, and what he says through his son, Jesus Christ, about worry, overcoming worry. How do you overcome worry? Well, first, you believe in Jesus Christ, correct? Oh, yeah. Believe in Jesus. So let's turn to Matthew six. And we're going to go to verses twenty five through thirty four. Matthew six. Twenty five through thirty four. And this is from the NIV version. And he says in his word to those of you who worry, he says, therefore, I tell you, 
Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not the, uh, he says, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Do you feel you're more valuable than they, folks? Can any one of you, including me, by worrying, add a single day to your life? Can you do it? Has it been done? I want to stop there for a second. Worrying, can it add a day? But it sure can shorten our lives. But yet we still lean on carnal nature, which is how we feel our emotions. And we worry about things that are so out of our control till we are stressed out in anxiety. And now we're sick. We have all kind of issues going on. And we think worry is going to solve our problem. It's created more problems for us. So I want you to hear what Jesus is saying in this moment as he's using this as an example. He says, man, you can't even add one day to your life. You can't even add one hair on your head. So what makes you think that you're going to control something that's out of your control? Because you actually have none. The only thing you have control over is how you respond to that situation. And he gives us clarity. This is kingdom living, folks. Kingdom of heaven. Kingdom citizenship. When you're in the kingdom with a king who is the ruler, the beginning, the end, and there is no end in the spirit realm, you know he has this. Let's keep going. He says in verse 28, And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? What's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen a month later? What's going to happen six months down the road? What's going to happen? Is this going to happen? How am I going to handle that if it happens? And all of a sudden, you've got all of these things in your mind about things that haven't happened, and you're worried about stuff that may never, ever materialize. I'm going to give you some practical steps as we deal with how to overcome worry today. But let's finish out what he says. He says, for the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom. The kingdom. Where's the kingdom, folks? Spiritual realm. Not this kingdom, not this earthly existence. Seek first the kingdom and his what? Righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. And this is critical. I love what he says. He says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Can I get an amen? Amen. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Why does each day have enough trouble of its own? Because the devil is going to and fro. The devil is trouble. And he's coming to seek, devour, kill, steal, mess with your mind, capture your mind. As we talked about last week, he wants to keep you a POW in your mind, a prisoner of war. And we know that the, um, the great I am sent his son, Team Jesus, who had a mission to extricate the captives. And he did it with precision. That's what we talked about last Sunday. He did it, but the enemy wants to recapture your mind. So let's keep going. 
The reason God says there's enough trouble, we know because Satan exists and Satan is going to and fro. Now, how we overcome the trouble of that day? By trusting God's promises to give us a hope in the future found in Isaiah. Trust that he knows what's best. Trust that he will cover us. Trust that no weapons formed against us shall prosper. Trust that whatever is loosed in heaven is going to be loosed on earth through the vessels who believe. To those of us who are tapped into the kingdom, you're walking with authority, divine authority. Let me tell you something, folks, and I'm going to give credit to one of our leaders at the church, Apostle Maku, had a great Bible study yesterday with some of the leaders. The scripture tells us that we must have the mind of Christ, right? Seek the mind of Christ. Well, gee, God is not going to tell you to have the mind of Christ and not give you what Christ had to do the work here on earth. Think about that. What did Christ do? He did so many wonderful things, but yet he felt what we felt. And even as he felt what he what we feel today, he pointed us to the kingdom. The kingdom is where your power source is, folks. All of the distractions that we face every day are to keep us from looking at kingdom. When you don't know where your power comes from. And you get focused on all of the stuff that's here to distract you. You're wandering and you're beaten and you're going back and forth. You you don't know where your power is because you think your power is in your worry. Worry. And I'm going to say this. Don't want to sound heretical. But I'm going to say it and I will stand corrected by any theologian. But if Jesus tells us not to worry then I'm going to tell you, God is not going to give you worry. I will say worry comes from the devil. Worry comes from the devil. Worry is a distraction. It's of the flesh. It's carnal nature. And as we know in Romans 8, if you want to jot this down, Romans 8, somewhere around 6 and 7, it says carnal nature, what we can see, what we can feel, what we can touch. Emotions. It's enmity against God for it. it cannot please him. So our emotions, our feelings, what we can see is over here. God is over here. Now, the one who is leasing this environment for now, which is Satan, is working in this environment. So if he wants to capture you as a POW in the mind, Let me keep you focused on everything that's going on here. So you don't focus on the king and the kingdom where your power comes from. Focus on this environment where many of us think is our kingdom. I want you to think about that. When we are focused on this, we're not focused on him. We're powerless. But when we're focused on him. Heaven. Is upon us. See. Whatever God loosed in heaven. Whatever he ordained in heaven. Because anything that happens for God on this side. Has already been ordained by him. In his realm. If you look through the word of God. Those who spoke the word. Who did wonderful things for God. Were willing vessels. On this side. To speak, to move as God directed and did amazing things. It wasn't them. It was what was already loosed in heaven that now came through the vessels who are connected to the kingdom. When you're connected to the kingdom like Moses, when you're connected to the kingdom like Joshua, when you're connected to the kingdom like David, when you're connected to the kingdom like Solomon and the list goes on and on. Look at the word of God. And one thing they all had in common. They were kingdom citizens connected to the father. Solomon was able to speak profound things, wisdom beyond human understanding. That wasn't Solomon. That came from God. Solomon was a vessel. 
Moses was scared. He couldn't even speak. Lord, you God, you got to get somebody else. But look what he did. And after a while, Moses walked with a boldness, with authority. After he got a little bit under his wing and he saw what God was doing, he kind of had a little bounce in the step. You know, that's how we have to be. God wants you to remember. He's telling me to have you remember that situation where you thought it was hopeless. And he got you out of it. And you knew that it was nobody but God. He says, go back to that moment right now. I want you to take a minute. I'm not going to say a word right now. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Think about that moment, because part of our issue is we forget so quickly. Remember that time. When he brought you out of Egypt. I'm going to pause for 10 seconds. I want you to think about it. Do you remember? He did it for you then. He can do it for you now. He's the same God then, the same God now. And he's saying to you, don't worry about whatever you're worrying about, that situation. Don't worry about, am I going to be able to pay the bills? Don't worry about, am I going to have clothes? What school, what college is my child going to go to? Don't worry about any of that. You can't control any of it. The only thing you can control is how you respond to it. God gives us clarity in how to respond to things. Trust him. Worship him. He'll give you how to move forward. It is said in his word. But let me tell you, as we said, worry comes from Satan. And God says we don't have the ability to do certain things. We don't have the ability to add one day. But through worry and we can remove days from our lives through stress. And this is what's happening. How many of you have worried about things? I want you to raise your hand. Just be honest. Raise your hand. OK, we've all worried. But this is what worry is. Worry is like a smothering cloud. Doesn't it smother you when there's a problem going on? And it's like this cloud that keeps descending and and you have nowhere to move, but you want to move, but you don't know what to do. And that's your perspective now, that cloud. And what that cloud does is it attempts to block out the light of God. The light of God is in the kingdom. It comes from the kingdom. But if I can get you to focus on that cloud that seems to be descending and all around you, you see no hope, which is on high. You see no future because of that cloud that seems to be smothering you. And it keeps going on and it leaves you with no hope. It leaves you with a perspective of no future. And then worry consumes your mind to the point that you are now speaking trouble into the atmosphere that doesn't even exist. Yet your worry unleashes it because you believe it enough to worry that it will come even though it has not materialized just yet. This, my friend, is a stronghold on your mind. P.O.W. Recaptured. Jesus came to set us free. He said, do not worry, but yet we still worry. Worry doesn't come from God. It comes from the devil. Look to God. Do not worry. Worry consumes your mind. It is a crazy thing. And here's what happens. When we begin to worry about things that have not even materialized, we start to speak those things that we think may happen as we try to strategize on how we're going to deal with it if it comes this way. You speak it into the atmosphere. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Do you guys believe the scriptures are God inspired? Do you believe that God inspired people? They were vessels who he used to share the word. Okay, this is from him. He says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. 
in the moment of worrying about the situations that you're facing and thinking about things that may come to pass that haven't even materialized, you ultimately start to speak those things outwardly. You speaking them because you believe it in your heart. Your heart is not here in the spirit realm. Your heart is here in the mind. The mind is the heart of the spirit, the soul. When Jesus came to release you as a POW, he wanted to release your mind, which as Romans 12, 2 tells us to be not conformed to this world, but be yet transformed by the what? The renewing of the mind. It's where the mind is, where the battle is going on. And if I can keep your mind consumed on things that are not in your control, your mind cannot focus on the kingdom where your power will come. The power that comes is the wisdom and understanding to know that God has this thing under control. And while it may not turn out quite the way you think it should, God always has a reason for allowing things to come to pass. There is nothing that we've ever experienced that has ever is nothing new on this planet. It may be packaged a little differently, but it's the same lie. The enemy is cunning. And so we have to understand that when we speak something based off of our worry and the thing hasn't even materialized, we're speaking it into existence. Proverbs 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. (sighs) Folks, if you're worrying all the time about stuff, then you now have identified with your worry. Your worry is now who you are. Now, God doesn't send worry. Who does? Who are you identifying with now when you're worrying all the time? Because you think your worry is going to fix your problems when God says, I got it. Let's keep going. I'm speaking to folks today. Worrying is an addiction. (laughs) We've all had our share of addictions. I'll raise my hand. It's a drug that attempts to take your mind off of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, where your power source is located. Worrying is carnal nature saying to you that through worrying, you can fix whatever you are worrying about. Another lie. Carnal nature is against God. I've said that in Romans 8. Now, here's the deal, folks. Here's how we overcome worry. Write this down. We overcome worry by going to his word. Where we will see his promises. Now, this is about your faith and what you believe. Do you really believe the word of God is true? Do you believe God is real? Do you have do you believe that God has the ability to do those things that he said? Or do you think that God is just a character made up in our imagination that you hope will be there when you die? But you're not quite sure. This is really a time for self-examination about what we believe. In our heart about who God is and who he says he is. We overcome worry. By believing his promises, we believe his promises because we believe in him. When you believe in the father, everything will come to pass that he said would, because God cannot lie. We defeat worry when God's promises consume our mind, not worry. We defeat worry. When God's promises consume our mind. That means that when you are worried, anxious about a situation, consumed emotionally, that's the time to pray. That's the time to go to the word. Worry will paralyze you to the point that you will not want to do anything. And that's exactly where Satan wants you. He wants you paralyzed, not calling on the power that's from on high, but staying stuck in this cloud that's smothering you. And you think there's no future. There's no hope. It's bleak. And it continues. And all of a sudden, the light seems to be gone. But yet there's still that 
sparkle of light that comes through. You have to look to the light and not the darkness that seems to surround you. The devil wants us to be in a situation where we don't see God. We just see the problem that God said would surely come our way in this particular day. And then we must walk in authority. A kingdom citizen, a believer, a believer, a person who has confessed with their mouth and believe in their heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, that he died on the cross for our sins, was resurrected from the dead three days later, and he sits at the right hand of the Father in heaven. We've had a heart change. In other words, we don't want to do those things that we used to do. We just want to live for God and he will grow us. That person baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Kingdom citizen with kingdom citizenship comes rights. Comes power. When you understand that, walk with authority, with a boldness. Do not walk defeated because he's already overcome defeat. Victory. We're working from a position of victory. We're not working from vict- for victory. Victory has already been won. The kingdom of heaven is upon us. For those of us who are vessels, if you're a vessel for God, then the kingdom of heaven is here. Amen. Tap into the power that exists now as you keep your mind focused on God. God will, in that moment of temptation, think about God. Turn away from it. We will be tempted. All kind of temptations. When we walk in authority, God's word, it will produce patience. How many of you are asking God for more patience? How many of you have prayed the prayer, Lord, give me more patience because these kids are about to get on my nerves? Lord, my husband, Lord, my wife, Lord, the boss at the job. (laughs) Lord, if this brother comes and asks me for another dollar after I gave him five dollars last week. Oh, Lord, give me patience for him. All right. How many of you have asked God for patience? Honestly. Now, how do you think he's going to grow your patience? Through the tribulations by testing your patience. Every time you ask God, God, I need more patience. He's going to send someone to test your patience. <laughs> you see how when you speak something into the atmosphere, how it, how many times, you know, and when you think about that, honey, when we say, Lord, give me more patience. And then we test your patience. Lord knows I've tested my wife's patience. Well, you know, I'm the teacher teaching you to have more patience. <laughs> I'll be on the couch tonight, folks. But go to James one. Verses two and four. And patience is a powerful tool because patience reflects who we know is in control. And the word of God in James says, my brethren, count it all joy with when ye fall into diverse temptations, the worrying, whatever the the trouble that may come. Satan is trouble. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith, the tribulation that you face, the problems that cause worry, the anxiety, all of these situations are trials and tribulations. It's the trying of faith, of what you believe, it worketh patience. And let her, let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. When you don't have any control over the situation, how you respond to that situation determines what you believe. A kingdom citizen will wait on God, will know that fiery darts that are being fired at our minds is an attempt to take our attention off of heaven and focus on those things we have no control over, causing us a whole lot of physical pain. 
And in my book, Killing for Lies, Seeing as True, Learning to Listen and Hear God, I want to read a passage to you. It talks about patience. When God speaks to his people, he speaks to us in a way that we understand. To have patience, one must not be worried about time or control, because one should come to understand God does not work on a 24-hour clock, and he is in complete control. Patience is about a process, folks. You can see God's handprint on everything on the planet. The trees grow, their leaves fall, leaves return, winter comes, spring arrives, summer commences, autumn arrives, babies are born, people die, birds migrate, the grass grows, cows consume the grass, their systems produce milk, and then it is used for consumption. There is a process for everything that takes time. And we are all connected in this process of God's perfect design. Some processes are faster than others, but the process must occur in order for something to happen the way God designed it. Patience allows God's purpose and plan to play out. Worrying causes us to interject ourselves into the process as if we have the ability to change the trajectory of it. God is saying to us to not worry, but to focus on him, to pray, to seek the word. When you feel like hope is lost, go to the word. When you see trouble coming, go to the word. When it seems like that cloud, even though you're going to the word, continues to descend and come all around you. Remember, that cloud wants to get a reaction out of you to move without God using your own understanding. But the word of God tells us in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 that we trust in the Lord with all our heart and we lean not on human understanding. In all our ways, we acknowledge the kingdom. And the kingdom and the king will direct our path in that situation. Practical tip for you all before we get ready to close, because we're about to close. Take one day at a time. He said, don't worry about tomorrow for today has enough trouble of its own. When you're focusing about on something that's 10 miles down the road, you're missing what's right in front of you. Focus on right now and wait for those things to come your way and then get allow God to give you how to deal with it. Don't speak anything into existence based off of what you see right now. Deal with this right now. By trusting God. And you'll find that as this thing happens right now, you're able to get through it. Keep moving on the journey towards God. And what happens is something else will come. And the stronger you get, the more things come at you. See, as long as you're weak and haven't come to understand what really is going on in the spirit realm, you'll be right here. And all they got to do, when I say they, you know what I'm talking about, spiritual wickedness. Just throw that one thing at you because you just stay stuck there. But when you push through it and get stronger and stronger, they all come. But here's the thing. God wants you to remember when you were there and who got you to here. It's important to remember, brother. It's important to remember. When you constantly remember, you'll know the power that you have in you to keep moving. And as you keep moving, then all those things start coming. And guess what? You don't even worry about it. It's how you respond to it. How you respond. When you respond using human understanding, it always causes chaos and confusion. But when you respond to it through the word of God, the way God tells us, it's not going to feel good to the flesh. It's not going to feel good. I just, don't, I just think we need to do it this way. When your flesh wants to do it that way, you need to do the opposite of what your flesh wants. Are you with me? All minds clear? 
want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. If there's anyone here who feel like they backslidden, that they, they don't know Christ, that they want to have a relationship, you want to have a relationship with them. With your eyes closed and heads bowed, only I can see you. I want you to know, first and foremost, this is about a direct connection between you and God. I want you to raise your hand if you feel like you're not saved. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I am so sorry for the things I have done. I believe in my heart that you are Lord, that you died on a cross for my sins and was raised from the dead three days later and you sit at the right hand of the Father. I confess with my lips and I believe in my heart that you are Lord. You can lift your head and open your eyes. If you prayed that prayer, you're saved. Get baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And remember, being saved doesn't mean trouble will no longer come. But now you know where your power comes from. And so as you're saved, more trouble will come. I'm not speaking that into existence. It's already said in this word. You are a threat to the enemy. And boy, when you're on fire for God, the enemy is going to try to burn down your house. To God be the glory.